agenda a bit to accommodate them. Uh, but the first order of business is to review the November 20th meeting minutes. I realized that several of you were not here for that, um, so obviously if you would prefer to abstain, um, it's fine, but I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes from November 20th, 2023. So moved. Second. Seconded by Matthew. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? I'll abstain. That'll be Ian, Adrian, and Jen. Next, uh, I'll entertain a motion uh, on the March 11th, 2024 meeting minutes. Does anyone want to move? I move we accept the, meet the minutes of the March 11th meeting. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. Seconded, Seconded by Jen. And uh, all in favor? Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, Dean abstains. And so that motion carries. Uh, next up is discussion of the uh, graduation date. We'll actually be voting on this at next Monday's meeting, but we just wanted to have a little explanation. Well, we have a lot of anxious seniors and families that want to know this date, and this is the time I can pretty confidently say no more rainstorms and snowstorms. And um, our 181st day is. January, June 13th, which would make June 14th a wonderful Friday to graduate so seniors. So I'm feeling really good about that. And I know a few years ago the state passed a law that if we took a vote in March, mm -hmm. that it would become final, even right. if there were additional days that the system was closed for whatever reason. Well, and we have that extra day. The board has... Um, students come uh, beyond the 180 days, so we do have a little bit of flexibility, and we do have seniors who need to practice graduation and they come in for a nice breakfast. So I think we're really pretty safe with going forward with that date. So again, we'll f formally vote on that next Monday. Um, next up is discussion. Re um, regarding the recording of Board of Ed committee, uh, committee meetings. And uh, Ian, I believe that was your referral. Uh, yeah. Do you want to speak to that? Sure. Um, basically, the idea was just to uh, make it easier for everyone to keep in, keep up on current events as far as like what the committees are discussing. Um, but also, it wasn't just recording the committee meetings, but also publish them, publishing them to the, uh, to the YouTube channel. <coughs> that uh, Grant Public Schools runs. Um, and I had brought it forward to the policy committee, but the policy committee wanted to bring it back to the cow to see if it was the will of the body um, to even explore what a policy would look like um, to see if that was a desire, uh, rather than us taking the time to write something up that maybe the majority of the board did not want to see. Again, I can't. I can't find my hand. So okay. What I want to say. Yep. I want to say that I. I. Uh, I am in favor of this heartily. Uh, it it makes such a big difference. So that when the, the chair can review at the actual meeting to make sure that everything is being covered and nothing is missed when the, the committee meets again. Okay. Thank you, Andrea. Um, Matthew. Matthew. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm uh, inclined to be very favorable to the recording of meetings. I think the recording of the meetings itself is something that's fairly simple. It can be delegated to one of the committee members to or administration to mechanically record it. My concern that we'll address when we talk about it, and I do look forward to talking about it, and I'd like some input from, is what the, what the if we do videotaping of the meetings, uh, what's the opportunity cost, both in terms of labor and expense uh, of charging our audiovisual department with doing a lot more labor and time to 
I don't say edit because they're not going to edit, but they still have to format it and get it uploaded. I don't know how much time is involved. I don't either. I'd have to find that. But out. I, I think that's that would be right. very useful if we could have that available when we discuss it. But I, I know that as a, um, as we're marching through this year, we're we're really restricting overtime for mm -hmm. all in mm -hmm. the central office and in the buildings. I mean, that's one of my um, initiatives, and you know there are others, but um, just being ever so careful on overtime and making sure, and this gets to be a very busy time for Caitlin and Mark, so we've had a conversation about how this is all going to work, because they are, you know, they go 24-7 with all the mm -hmm. commitments that they have in the spring. But I can find out more for you. I think that would be very helpful for our, our considering it. But yeah. certainly the recording, and I don't know, I presume we could upload a, an audio stream uh, isn't as sexy, but you know it, it would be available for the public. And certainly, if something that any committee were doing was of a great concern to the public, they could certainly listen to it. I don't know; they need to see our faces. But let's. Well, right now, we live stream those regular meetings, and so that's a really easy process that you can live stream it, and then it can go up. Mm -hmm. And that's really great that we have that access at the town hall. Mm -hmm. um, but. I don't know. Are we going to be able to live stream the COWs at all? Or We're, We are live streaming right now. Oh, okay. So that's another easy. So having the regular meeting and the COWs kind of almost instantaneously moving forward, that sounds good. Is there any other uh, room in this building, Clint, which can live stream, or is this the only room that's... Uh, this is the only one that is set up for it. So anything is possible, but it would take some considerable setup and configuration. So... I guess theoretically for communications, walking across the hall wouldn't be a problem, but that's that's one possible solution. We'll talk about that too. Because if we can do it easily, let's consider it. Well, and there is a cost factor to having staff here to do that work. So for the COWs and the regular meetings, we have that. With the other committee meetings, it would probably be up to admin to use a Zoom link and record it if we had to do that. Yeah, since there's always staff at the uh, mm -hmm. committees, I think it would, as long as they're using district equipment, I mean, it, it would be problematic if a chair were using a personal device and then had to figure out how to get that back to the district. But if, if a staff member is using uh, a district device and can get it over, um, it seems like that's the simple solution. I don't know what the, the time factor is for uh, publishing publishing yeah. a Zoom <laughs> recording to, to YouTube. Obviously, I, too, don't want to see band concerts and things not get taped because of <clears throat> time. Um, but, but in general, you know, I would support it. Um, I think there's also the ability to publish um, the Google Drive link. We could. We were trying to we, – we could do that in – my preference would be to do it in addition, if need be, because we're really trying to make – the Groton Public Schools YouTube channel, the single source of truth, be it school events, be it board of ed meetings, et cetera. The advantage to that is people can subscribe to the channel and then the algorithm works on that and as they see more, it feeds it into it so there's more, you can go to it, find what you need, but there's also that serendipitous, wow, it's it shoved the basketball game into my feed and I'd like to take a look. It's right here, yeah. Um, if I could speak to that, um, my experience with uploading videos to YouTube is you know, if you have about an hour-long video, uh, depending on, on you know, the, the uh, quality of your connection, it takes maybe about 10 or 15 minutes. And it's pretty much a thing you just kind of, you click it, and mm -hmm. it just goes. You just walk and away. And if the YouTube channel is set up in a certain way, you just, uh, it, it'll auto, it'll already, um, well, it automatically will give you a thumbnail as a screenshot at once the video is uploaded. So, and then... The title bar shows at the bottom. It doesn't. You don't necessarily have to put graphics in for mm -hmm. a committee meeting because the way YouTube is encoded, that you know, when you when you hover on a on a screen, or you'll just see what date it is, what committee it is. Mm. So it could be really low tech and low impact for the tech department. If I may, right now we are not live streaming via YouTube the committee meetings, the subcommittee meetings. Mm -hmm. We're typically doing that in a webinar format in Zoom. We have the ability to record that and then shove that over to YouTube. So it's it's because subcommittee meetings are sometimes in the assistant superintendent's office or where have you, to have a live stream set up in addition to a Zoom meeting is certainly technically feasible, 
but it adds an extra step. So we typically do webinar with a subcommittee meeting. Mm -hmm. That way we can invite, the, the public can see it with the viewer link right. of the same meeting, and the Board of Ed members and anyone you invite in would be a panelist, so you're on camera, whereas tonight's meeting, we simply use a standard Zoom meeting because we're sharing with the public via YouTube. Because we're in this room, it's set up with microphones and cameras and so forth. All right. I'm going to uh, recognize Bev, and then I saw Matthew raise his hand. Thank you, Jay. Um, I would be in favor of this also, especially the recording of the committee meetings. But I, before I vote yes to the video taping of the meeting, I'd like to know the cost effect that it's going to have on our budget. Okay. But I do think it's a good idea, but I'm, I'm interested in the cost. So, uh, Matthew, and then I'm done. Dean. I'm done. Oh, you were done. Okay. I thought you raised your hand. Dean? Yeah, I mean, at this point, and I was going to say what everybody else has pretty much said, which is I've got no problem with it. Uh, I understand the the potential usefulness of it. The actual usefulness, I can't speak to that because uh, we're already, you know, inundated with with more material than we can handle. Uh, but my primary concern is is the – I wasn't even thinking about the cost. I was thinking about the time spent by Mark and Caitlin mm -hmm. and, you know, what are their commitments already and, you know, is this doable? Because it's easy to say let's do this, but who's going to be doing it? So, so that, that's been our concern. wingman for committee meetings, and he's been able to set those up for us ahead of time. And like Jay said, if there's staff on board, I'm sure you can show me how to do that. Sure. And Phil, and we can, we'll figure it if out. If you think we're trainable. We don't cost it. You don't pay me extra for my yard, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I won't charge you too much. <laughs> All right. Well. Oh uh, yeah, and, and just to circle back, uh, if if it were the committee meetings, I understand like we want to keep a low overhead. Um, so if we ran them through Zoom, if there's one live Zoom link that somebody had access to on the on the committee or on the administration that was attending the meeting, um, all you do is hit record, and then you would, you could just you know email it or you know it would get. I believe it just goes into the the Zoom account. Two choices. You could sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. Two choices. You could record it locally, or and then you could upload it, or you yeah. can have it record in the cloud. Right. So yeah, that, if my memory serves, when I was on the RTM, we would record onto the cloud, and then whoever uh, Greeley, Sean Greeley, would have access, and he could just pull it and post it. And usually they showed up for the committee meetings, yeah, not the regular meetings. They would show up within 24 to 36 hours or so after the meeting. Which you know is, is a fairly reasonable time, I think. That sounds like the most efficient way to. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's something you could probably do, like you know, the next day at work, you know, just set it, post it, walk away, do something else, come back, and just make sure it. And if I it. if I may, I apologize, but if I may, I'm more concerned about being very clear on what our marching orders are from the board mm -hmm. and administration to make sure that we're towing that line, as opposed to which variation. Technically, we can do a lot of these things. Yes, there could be a potential cost and extra hours and so forth. That is true. But I just want to make sure that we ultimately get very clear orders so that we're following through on that. Okay. I, I, would, look, I would look forward to getting advice from admin on uh, the various options we have, and the committee members can consider them and come back with a recommendation, and the board will act on it any way they want. But I'm optimistic. All right. Well, I'm not hearing any objections, so I guess um, we don't vote at Committee of the Whole, but it seems like the uh, consensus is that we'll commit it to the committee, as Dean likes to say. <laughs> now that's great news. <laughs> All so right. Will there be a vote um, at the final meeting? or? It'll go to policy. We'll go to policy. We'll, we'll, All right. we'll commit it to the policy committee. Okay. Yes, sir. Did All I right. Closely related. Um, the old meetings, so we used to have meetings back to 21 or 22 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And now I think it goes back as early as January 23. Mm -hmm. Is there any desire to have older meetings online or is there a cost associated with just putting those back up? Because I think they all disappeared last November or December. Or I, we were going over a changeover. Is that when we got the new yeah. website? Would you like me to speak to it? Yeah. So yeah. we consolidated, there were, there were multiple, thank you. 
sorry, gentlemen, excuse me. There were multiple channels and iterations of it over the last 10, 15 years, what have you. We made the decision to really consolidate it into one single Groton Public Schools channel. So we did bring over the Board of Ed meetings from January 1, 2023, moving forward. It's a com d discussion that we had. Certainly we can go back. The process would be identifying those meetings making sure they're labeled correctly and then shifting them from one channel to the other. So it's not, it's not trivial, but it's not, we're not talking about hundreds of hours of work. So if it was the pleasure of the board to say they want to go back to a certain date, we would do our best to do that. You know, I, I haven't gone through the entire catalog for the last 10 years on what's there as far as subcommittee meetings, et cetera, but we could certainly do that. There's no reason why we can't move the videos that we have in one channel to another. All right. Uh, um. Bev has her hand raised, and then Matthew. Uh, Jay, should we be voting on this formally at a Board of Ed regular meeting and then sending it to policy? And that will give Susan and the, and the administration a chance to come back and tell us about the hours that will be needed to do this and any cost to it. I think that's how we should do it, vote on it formally and then send it to policy. You're sending it to policy before we even vote on it formally. I mean, right. that's my well, idea. She's still on the last topic. Um, okay. Dean had a comment on that. Yeah, I have, Bev makes a good point mm. because the policy committee is not the cows committee, it's the board's committee. Mm. So technically, you're, it's the board that has to commit the issue to the policy committee. Technically. Okay. Oh, I see Beth's point. I don't think we've ever done that, but we can start now. Uh, just to, uh, I'm not sure if you were here at the, when I said this, but at, at, a, at the prior board meeting, I believe, uh, when we got to speaking about our various committees, I said that in the past, a uh, policy committee has dealt with stuff that would be generated by the state, be generated by CABE, be reviewing old policies, but there seemed to be some interest from a number of members of our committee to possibly introduce some brand new policies. And the question that rose in my mind is, okay, any committee member can propose anything he or she wants, uh, but do we want to do all the work on trying to put together a policy without knowing whether the board is even interested? So I set a process by which we would do exactly what Ian is doing. We'd bring an idea, a board member generated idea, and, and ideas can be generated by non-policy committee members as well, to the board for a general discussion. If there is resonance with the idea, go back in the policy committee would work on it to try to craft a thing for the board's review, uh, modification, denial, adoption. So that's, this, that's the process that we had in mind. But if you don't like the process, that's also your prerogative. Well, and part of the process is watching out for all this legislation to make sure that the law that we, you know, we've been able to write policy mm -hmm. around new legislation too. So we're watching that as well mm -hmm. through CABE. Um, past practice has been that chairs can actually add items to their own agendas and that consensus at COWs has also resulted in items going to committee. However, um, if <coughs> the board would like to formalize this to make every commitment to a committee go through a vote at the main meeting, I'm not against it, but it, it's just we've, we've never needed to go through that much to get an item on an agenda. Yeah, so this is, I understand how, how the board has been operating for quite a while, and it may be the better way to go. Um, and as I sit here, I don't have the foot thick policy manual in front of me. The committees, both the COW and the other committees may have, in fact have been given a very broad remit. And this may be why the finance committee, for example, other committees feel free to put things on their own agenda without having things specifically referred to them. So, okay, if, for example, you're the finance committee, do finance things. Well, that would be a remit to just generate your own business. Technically, though, the, these committees shouldn't be generating their own business. They're supposed to, be the, supposed to be the direction in which the board directs specific questions. We don't want to hash it out right here. We'll give it to the XYZ committee, and we'll let them 
futz with it for a month or two months or 10 years or whatever, they should report back and say, this is what we've come to. Technically, that's how it should work. But that runs against the way we have uh, been doing things. I, I know that. When I say we, I mean the boards, before, even before my time. Because it's just more convenient that way for every committee to operate kind of its own you know, franchise, if you will. Uh, and that may work. That may be a great idea. Maybe that's, that, maybe that's too muddy. Maybe that's too, too freewheeling. I don't know. I have found that um, creating an agenda for a committee uh, being based on it being voted at a main meeting means that if you want to have a finance committee meeting next month or next week, um, you know, all of your agenda items would have to be, I guess, committed at the main meeting. I just right. think it gets very legalistic, but, but most that's of the, just but, my opinion. But, but, most, yeah, but most of the items, most of the items of, for example, finance committee, using that as an example, are, are longstanding. They, they had been referrals from the board. They're on the list of referrals, and these are that's things that we're always thing. talking about, the fields and the, you know, can, this, the, some aspect of facilities. They're very, the minority of the items are the ones generated by the committee itself. You know, what, do we, what, do we, what should we talk about this week or this month? Um, so there's always business there, but it's business from, from before. It's running business. Anyway. Ian and then Bev. Um, yeah, I would just say I'm, I'm fine with either process, but I would say let's commit to one. And make it formal, you know, and make it like that. That's the thing we do for all referrals to a committee. So it's not just like, oh, this one will run through regular meeting, and this one we can bounce straight from a cow, or this one can be self generated by whatever committee. That lack of consistency of, of policies is problematic, I think. And so I would just say, let's choose one method and commit to that. And I'm fine with any of the three. Beverly. Ooh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm not opposed to it going to committee, but I think that it should, that if this is something the board wants to do, the committee as a whole is a committee. We should be formalizing this at a regular board of ed meeting. That's where all the voting should take place. Even if the committee decides to do something, it has to come back to a regular board of ed meeting for us to say, yes, we're going to vote on it and move it forward or not. So that's why I'm saying that we don't even have all the information yet. We don't know how many, like Dean says, what, what Mark and Kate have to give up to do all this work, how much it's going to cost, how many hours it's going to take. So until I find out that information, which could happen at the next Board of Ed meeting, then I'm willing to vote on it. But I don't think we should vote on anything until it's at, you really formalize it at a regular Board of Ed meeting. I mean, I, I don't think the town council operates this way. I think they vote on everything. They do a consensus at the committee as a whole, and then they vote on it at a, at a town council meeting. Okay, so I just want to bring up a practical matter. We have a communications meeting scheduled for next Monday, but the board hasn't committed anything to it. So we'll cancel that meeting, and that'll be the practical effect of agendas going forward. The committees won't be able to meet until they've been given uh, something to do by the the board. So I just that's just something to think about. All right. All right. So. Are there any other comments? Just to clarify. So does that mean um, the process by which a referral goes to committee should be a subject for the policy committee to develop a policy to describe? If we don't already have one, it, it sounds to me like I, it already. seems to me we either need to study the the bylaws yeah. or we need to send it to yeah, I think committee we have to look at the bylaws next meeting okay. first and just see if that is a good way to do business. <laughs> just want to make sure we capture that all. Yes, right there. interesting. Yep. 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 Thank you, Jen. Your thoughts? So, so <laughs> the communications committee is canceled for lack of remit. Yes, sir. I I, I would have to um, kind of echo what you were saying. Is I I, I just worry. Um, and the, however this goes, I just worry that we may end up having to wait two months to talk yeah. about something. Yeah. That will be the practical That we thing. really need, like some things we need to talk about right sooner away. than that. Right. Um, so by, by having it discussed in a cow and then voted on, and then the committee might meet, meet a full month after that, yes. 
and then sometimes the committee might not have time to finalize a report you know so we could be dragging things down a lot if um, if we want to and if we follow that agenda. if we follow that does that also uh, control the committee of the whole because I have to tell you that we made all these things up on Monday we didn't uh, or on Friday we didn't but we did look at our we have a monthly sheet that goes through what you know the first is curriculum the next is finance and facilities so that is a guide for us a guidepost so that we know month to month what we typically right. are talking about and then we have yeah. the tracker sheet right so we do have things already in there but you're right especially with legislation the way it's been lately and policy if we have to write policy and it takes us a meeting maybe two meetings and then we bring it to the regular meetings two months in a row and they I, might I say by I'm july gonna, one you need this I, done. I think i'm going to have to move on because yeah. i've probably already violated the <laughs> agenda item which i got uh, dinged for on march 4th um, so i think we need to move on okay. to finance update J -J fy 23 closeout Jay, before we do that, could I just say that every uh, committee may have a different rationale for how what they choose. That's all I want to say. So we should keep it open. Can I just ask a question? I agree, or statement, I agree with what Adrian said. We're just adding bureaucracy. So yeah. my question is, would Ian need to just reiterate what he said? next Monday so that we can tell him to refer it back to the committee and then we talk about it next committee of that's, the whole that's what I would suggest that had been the intent of However, that had been the okay. entire intent However, of this exercise today agenda for tonight so okay no I'm just asking I have once again allowed this sorry to go completely <laughs> off the rails and so don't, don't worry. it's still under um, board of ed committee Jay, it's going to be recorded don't worry Jay. it's all going to be recorded <laughs> Jay, and transcribed it's still under board of committee uh, board of ed committee uh, recording of yeah. anyway recording of so let's move on to finance update fiscal year 23 closeout yeah, and, oh unless do we have our are they going to be joining by zoom or in person? Uh, by Zoom. Okay. Is that the right, person? So keep an right eye. There? Keep an eye out no. for them. No. no okay. okay. And I have a half a bullet too at the end I want to add in. So let me just give you a couple updates, and we'll keep these on the radar as we go forward too. Um, one relative to the 2023 kind of audit checkout process. Um, We've completed all our reconciliations. We've completed all the documentation. Um, any of the uh, entries have been prepared. All that information has been sent to the town and to the auditors. Um, we've even processed the fund transfer. So 2023 is, well, it's been a couple weeks now, but is now in the auditor's hands, the town's hands. Um, haven't heard anything since we sent that information over, but that's sort of behind us right now. Mm -hmm. So that, that is complete. And they did a really good job and collaborated with the town. That was very helpful. Oh, they're really super people helpful. worked together. Yeah. And I think there was a $71 difference that was to our favor yeah, <laughs> in the end. Small. So after all of that. Yeah. But at least but at least now, you know, all, all the documentation and yeah. everything's behind us and it's we'll, we can move forward to twenty twenty four and twenty twenty five. Good work. Thank you, Dave. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Um, so on 2024, real quick, I sent a couple attachments. I can bring them up on the screen. You've seen those before. I just want to keep them out in front of you as the, as the year continues. Um, the first one is the, the property cost. If you want, I can, should I share screen too? Or, I think everyone has it, right? Yeah, we have. It'd be good for the people at home to yeah, sure. put it up. Yeah, one second here. Then we have the ability to share, right? Yeah, you should have it right. Yeah, I had it open. I just have to okay. open it again. Sorry, my bad. Um, we have to. Oh, there we go, Berg. That's all right. They know. This shouldn't take long. Share. All right. So, um, <clears throat> 
again, very similar, but I wanted to give you a couple updates. So the first two items, the two early Mystic River, I'll call them events. Um, the first one was the bottle filler. The second is the nurse admin area. Um, so two things going on there. One is the town has agreed to help us pay for the deductible for the first one. So that's a $25,000 deductible. And then also help us pay for the $4,475. So roughly 29,000 and change that the town has offered to, to pay for those. But two. it'll take away that $58,000. So the, first one. the 53 will go away because eventually we'll get reimbursed by the insurance company right. for the non-deductible portion. Um, and then as you go down, the, you know, I'm not sure if anything's really changed other than, you know, you just kind of true up the numbers. The big one on the bottom, obviously, is a cyber attack. You know, we have an estimate in for set, uh, 100. We already have really comfort comfortable um, estimates around 74,000 of that. So that starts to feel like a real number there. So we're, you know, we're somewhere in that 380, $390,000 range in terms of all of these events that have happened to us. And those were not in the budget. None of these were in the budget. No. <coughs> does does past history of cyber attacks in at, with schools ever indicate any recovery of cost if they locate the person? Is that a viable possibility? I have not heard that. I think it costs the district and the town. But you know. Can I ask about that cost? Um, is that out of pocket in the sense of covering the um, hours taken to recover the system? Or is that a cost? Do we have insurance for cyber? That is the insurance. The 100000 is the insurance. Our deductible is 100000 Okay. So we're just kind of yeah. building up. No, they didn't have the time. Yeah. And the, time the, the team did an amazing job trying to tackle that. Right. In a timely fashion, so. But there right. was also. Well, that is my question. Yep. Right. And then, and then there was well, the insurance provides outside consultant, but also Homeland Security. Clint, I'm looking to you. Sorry. Homeland Security and the FBI have been involved, and our local police department, and they all yeah. did fabulous work. Uh, Beth. Dave, what does PO only mean next to the cyber attack? Yeah, Bev, you'll see on the right-hand side there, I actually started to document some of the checks that have been written just for myself so I can go back as a reference point. So PO only just means we haven't actually paid anything out yet. There's an estimate in the system for some of the um, expected cost. So PO would stand for purchase order? Purchase order, yep. Um, was there, did you want to lift the other attachment and then we can move forward after that or yeah, how much more about, time do we have? Revenue real quick, okay. All right. There. Okay. There we go. Two minutes and then. Yep. So we, you know, I thought I'd just kind of start to share this as well. You know, we normally talk about the other side of our equation, which is all the expense side. I thought I'd just give you an update on the revenue side as, um, some of the funding now is starting to come in through the, um, state and federal government. So I won't go through each one of these, um, but let me just kind of give you the punchline. On the bottom there, you'll see we estimated about 30805000 for revenue for this year. Um, I would say conservatively, we're at 30, $30,884,000. And then also, if you recall, somewhere around the October, November time period, we had some excess um, impact aid money from the prior year that came in um, that the town retained. So the way I kind of look at it is our budget was about 30 million 805 and we're heading towards 31 million and change. So we'll have excess revenue a little bit over 200,000. And I would say right now that's probably conservative because usually the way the state works is you usually get a portion of it up front and then you do a second filing. So Even the but I just thought I'd share. Yep. Yeah, go ahead, John. Does that come to us or does that go to mm -hmm. the town? The excess? The it goes to the town. Well, so, oh, because I was just wondering if it could sort of defer some of our expenses that wasn't part of the budget. Well, that special education excess cost reimbursement is supposed to come directly to the board. 
Um, well, yeah, well, I'm going to check. I don't, million? I don't think it does because it hasn't it historically hasn't, with all the. We were told by Senator Summers that it should. It, it may not have historically been mm -hmm. in Groton, but um, I think I've seen legal opinions suggesting. I think it the be state done. would indicate it should. I don't, in practice, I don't think it has. Okay. But I think we have the follow-up to this is kind of looking at getting through this year whole. But that yeah. that line doesn't mean that the town or the board will receive the entire million. That's what the claim was for, right? And the reimbursement is still in flux? Or have they already decided on the, the percentage? The excess cost? Yeah, have they decided on the percentage for this year? Nope. So, the, um, so what I've done is um, we've gotten our first 75%. We just got it actually three weeks ago uh, based on number of students and the reimbursement rate. And then I've just extrapolated that based on the next 25%. So that could change if there's more students. It could change if there's higher costs per student. Um, so you're saying the town has already received 75% of this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 75% was, was yep. released. Reimbursement? About the 28th or 20, 28th of February. And so. it, it was 75% of the million? Mm -hmm. So about 700 okay. I thought that. Or so. I thought that the state's reimbursement rate was still. Uh, no, that, that's the funds. reimbursement rate. The payout rate is 75% and then 25%. Okay. The reimbursement rate is how much you receive based on the, the total cost you incur. Okay. Um, and that is down. Okay. But the reimbursement process is, is always the same. It's always February and May or June. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll recognize Bev. Hey, when, when you, you say, say the um, 216000 is a conservative number for the excess revenue, do you think we might get more, that that yes. number might be higher? Yes. Oh, that would be good. <laughs> it would be I, I, if we could I use I think it would be good if we can <laughs> utilize it, but um, I'm just trying to give you the – again, to me, we don't, it doesn't seem like we talk revenue too much, so I just wanted to kind of get this dialogue going so people can understand the top part of our financial statement. Yeah. I would be curious to know, to know as well if this excess revenue would also be could also be classified as unexpended funds, and if this would qualify, this type of excess no, revenue yeah, no, would qualify for a non-lapsing fund deposit. Do some research on that one. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. But I've seen an opinion that it should have come directly to the board. It could certainly help with this property cost at this amount. So, and, so you're yeah. saying that 75 percent of this million fifty has already been received by the town. Well, I, I, it's been paid out. Let's put it that okay. way. It's been paid out. Okay. I don't have their books, but it's okay. it's been paid out by the state. Okay. All right. Yeah. Can I give one more quick update? Yep, please. One and a half, maybe. Uh, one second. I'll, uh, pull up my last sheet here. So this is um, maybe maybe even piggybacking off of our, our just discussion a minute ago. I just thought I'd keep you abreast of how we're tracking for this year. Um, and I should have set this out earlier. We had three payrolls this month, just to give you the the heads up. We had three. Um, I wanted to get the second one in before I gave you some updated numbers, which was Friday. So so off to the left again is your $81 million budget. The latest estimate right now is about 81 million, call it 81 million 900,000. Um, I have a contingency in there, which I'll talk about in a second, which theoretically would leave us about 385,000 short. That's less than the last time we talked. Um, and then I just put some boxes around some opportunities here. So the net amount of the property cost that, that's going to be sort of in our PL once insurance clears is about 277,900. And then I put another box in here of sort of our ways for us internally to capture the rest of that, that deficit, which is either through some spending freezes, which we actually started, not necessarily freezing, it's a bad word, but slowing down a few months ago. We're going to get salvaged from a truck. So it's just an idea here to capture how do we get ourselves back to zero without any other mechanisms. So um, the contingency, just to, just to kind of give you a heads up, it's, it's really just me being conservative and, and quite frankly we've had one major event every month mm -hmm. um, at least since I've been here so I'm trying to give us a little room there I've got to give us a little room for mandated services for special education because we don't have any options on that 
Um, I'm still on the fence somewhat with our transportation costs. Those are getting better, but it's, it's one of the items I'm not entirely clear on, so I've got a little reserve for that, but I just want to make sure I've got a, a little bit of space here and be transparent about that, um, just given the last few months of the year. And so if you go down that, on the right hand, you've got, I see the truck. Can you just list off those things um, that you've highlighted? On oh, the right hand column? Yeah. So the, the, you know, so we, if you look at our property cost, um, one of the events we had was one of our trucks was damaged and um, determined to be non-salvageable. So we're going to get a check for a little over 31,000 for that truck. Um, I think at some point we're gonna need a truck but I'm just putting it on the page in case we ever got to the point where we had to pull that trigger temporarily to get us through this year. Um, the other pieces are really me saying in, in some of these larger categories, so let's look at supplies. It's probably our largest single commoditized spending we have. If we could be smart about how we end the next 90 days, optimize that maybe across schools, across central office, you know, maybe there's some opportunity there. And then salaries and wages, um, I think there's really two places we're going to win on this one. One is uh, we've really been clamping down on overtime. Not that overtime was necessarily excessive, but at the same time really trying to make sure folks understand that, you know, we're just not working hours to work hours. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second thing there is um, we've got a pretty good read now on our, our accrual for year end. So if you remember one of the items we got hit with on the, the audit was making sure we had payroll covered at year end because it never ends on a, a perfect June 30. So we've got that covered now too. So I actually feel really good about that. And certainly if there were funds to be had from that excess cost towards this year, that would be so helpful. Well, I think so, it's I think it's you know revenue in general. So impact aid is one that always comes to mind because I I still believe that's a place that we're going to get another payment in the spring mm -hmm. that's going to put us well above our budget. Um, and you know, quite frankly, I, I don't want the money just to spend the money. But if we can apply it towards some of the things that we know that have caused us some challenges this year, I think that's appropriate. Mm -hmm. I'd rather do that than have to go to the council and say, I mean, I'd rather have it be the funds that were meant for earmarked for education. Yeah. As I said at the last meeting, uh, when we were talking about uh, the science of reading and the plan we have to move towards 80%, if not more, meeting grade level, that that plan was developed over time. And at the time it was developed, we had a certain level of staffing resources, which we won't have next year. So my hope is that any funds that we are able to economize or claw back or whatever verb you would choose to use uh, could be directed towards mitigating some of those losses so we can support this important program. Can I add a half a bullet comments, real quick? Questions? Sure. If I have an open. Um, so just, just update, just looking for some advice. Um, I've done some research on two out of three pieces of software for us for next year's cycle. One, which is the um, the power school version, I'll call it, of, of budgeting. I, I'm not even going to bring to you. I just don't think it has the qualifications and the, the capabilities that you're really looking for. Um, the second one is this AlloView that I've mentioned. Um, they're ready to come and give a demo. If you're interested, I thought it would be good for the board just to see functionality because they're very similar to what's in the marketplace today. Mm -hmm. um, so they they could dial in or some. So I just need some advice on, you know, if you're willing to see it for 15 minutes and and let them drive you through the capabilities, and then if you can get back to me on when a good time would that be? If it's another COW or something like that. And then I still owe you some homework on the. Um, the checkbook, sort of the AI version. We've got to do some research on that one. Yeah. I'd be willing to sit and, um, like, a committee of the whole meeting, like, okay. to have them come over. And yeah, I'm just looking for some advice on when the best time is to bring it into you, you yeah. know. And um. also, um, are we reviewing the software the town uses so that we could be fully integrated? Um, I, I, I 
somewhat familiar with that. I can bring that into the mix if you'd like. Okay. I thought I'd bring the three that I committed to up front first and start yeah. with those. That's all. That's why. Thank you. Um, yeah. I'm totally in favor of, of um, taking in that information and as okay. soon as possible, um, given everything else we have going on. I think it would be good to you know, make that determination as soon as we can because I'm sure the transfer, once we make a decision, yep. you know, it's going to take some time to transfer over. Yep. And the summertime would probably be the best time to try to do that. Yeah, they're talking, you know, 90 to 120 days, depending on how complex our chart of accounts is. Right. As you can imagine, right? Yeah. So, But I told them, um, I touched base with you and told them, don't, don't do anything more than what they've given me. They had a, a really nice sort of demo they walked me through. Mm -hmm. Oh, and <clears throat> in regards to the town thing, um, from... I've got. I've heard two different stories. You know, this munis that they use, and one story was that you know it would be possible for the board of ed to get on board with that for only a uh, usage fee. Okay. Um, and then the other one was the other story was like, no, that ship has already sailed, and we have to kind of start our own and get our own contract going. So you're, so. you're talking about sort of use, utilizing that as our our core financial management system with potential budgeting, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that's the best option, but it, it was one option that was floated out there when I was having a conversation with some people about it sure. informally. Sure. And um, <clears throat> I've used the ledger. I haven't used the budgeting yeah. piece. And, and some people believe that it was, since the town already bought it, we could work in conjunction with the town and just get it for the cost of software licensing and a usage fee. Okay. Or something like that, as yeah. opposed to like bringing on board all the hardware that might come with it. Absolutely, yeah, I have to, I'd have to look into it. I'm not, I'd have to just ask what their agreement is, you know. Yeah, and and again, we'd have to get that like you know in writing and understand clearly what exactly the parameters would be, because yeah, you know, if it if there's not a savings there, then I'm not sure it would make sense if it. And also, if there's a limitation in accessibility and you know, because I mean, the only thing about. that comes to mind initially is just. Um, as we talk through it, right, it's just which, which comes first. Because if you're going to move the entire ledger, you'd probably have to do that first before you got to some sort of budgeting, unless you just wanted to utilize the MUNIS budgeting, you know. Let me do a little homework on it first, and then I'll, I'll get back you. to you. I'd like to look into it the sooner the better, because this, you know, it seems like a ways away, but it, it'll come up on yeah. us fast, and we need to, to have a better system for next year, yeah. I think. And... Um, so I'm going to try to get it on a COW agenda while sure. I still can yep. until the board says. You can just give me a date. I'll I reach have to back send out. it through yeah. a, a meeting and. and that's give me a date. So I'm going to. I don't think we want it to sneak it on. A, I can go back to Asia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank boy. you, Dave. All right. All right. Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. Mr. Kilpatrick. Yeah, good evening. Good to see you. Haven't lost your sense of humor, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Whalo. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm going to flip flop these, and we'll go with the Charles Barnum roof first uh, because we do have some people online, and I'm going to ask uh, Rick Norris, who is online, uh, to introduce our team tonight uh, and speak about this briefly, and uh, then the team from Silver Petrocelli, our architect on the project, will uh, make their presentation. So Rick. I'll turn your mic on, Rick. Rick was gracious evening, enough Mr. to come Chairman in from Redondo Beach Station. tonight. So, uh, it's my first opportunity to meet with the new board. I'm happy to be here, and I think I'm glad I'm here tonight based on your conversation of what comes first, the chicken or the egg, as part of committee meetings. <laughs> um, we may be just a little. Uh, slightly disjointed tonight about we're going to the facilities and finance committee meeting tomorrow night. But I do have the representatives uh, yep. from Solar Petroselli and CSW who are our partners trying to put this roof and solar project together on uh, Charles Barnum School. You had a CIP project in place uh, for a million dollars for the roof. The roof itself is going to come in slightly more than that. And obviously, the solar panels on top of that. 
we really need to look at it and get uh, the board's approval before we can submit an application for a grant, you know, and then of course get that approved by the council and, and go forward there. So I'll let the uh, folks from uh, Silver Petroselli and CSW go into their presentation now. If you have any questions along the way, please feel free to ask. Thank you. Let him know he's off the hook tomorrow night. <laughs> There's no, there's no finance and facilities meeting tomorrow night. This is it. Okay, fantastic. Hi. 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 My name is uh, Kenneth Lindsley. I'm a Silver Petroselli Associate. Uh, again, I appreciate you guys gathering tonight to hear us. Um, I'll make it brief. I'll try to give you the, uh, the quick version of the roof replacement portion of the project. And again, you have to forgive me. I'm working off my iPhone at home, so I don't have complete control of the uh, PowerPoint. However, I'm going to do my best to work through it and give you guys uh, give you guys the information needed. Uh, first and foremost, um, this is a complete roof replacement over at the Charles Barnum um, uh, Elementary School. This project consists of about 30,000 square feet of existing roofing. As you can see in that aerial view there, we plan to replace all of the areas uh, within the school. So it's, it's going to be a 100% roof replacement. Now, with that being said, we plan to remove all of the existing components down to the existing structural deck and then, per code, we plan to install what's called, well, in the industry uh, lingo, um, uh, five inches of polyiso insulation, which basically gives us the code required R value for your building at an R30. And then on top of that, we're going to design this. Well, we uh, may, uh, uh, may I back that up. We have already designed a strategic uh, tapered insulation system, basically reutilizing the existing drainage in the school, uh, keeping cost savings in mind, of course, and um, reutilizing these uh, existing drainage. Now, we did do our homework to analyze all of the existing drainage uh, per the current IEPC code uh, roof drainage calculations. So essentially, everything uh, wound up being uh, uh, copacetic as per the way it was originally so we didn't have to add too much new drainage however we did have to add what's called the secondary drainage and essentially what that is that is in case of an emergency and the primary roof drains get plugged we have a secondary source now i don't want to get into too much of the uh, nitty gritty details of it. However, I just wanted to remind you folks that we did follow all of the current code uh, regulations and requirements. And per conversations with Sam, we decided to install what's called a TPO roofing membrane. Basically, it's called a thermoplastic um, uh, roofing membrane that is heat welded. Now, this membrane is recommended by all the PV manufacturers across Connecticut. Um, and what we're basically baking into this spec is a 20-year NDL warranty, which means no dollar limit. So what that also means is we could be at 19 years and three months. And if there's a catastrophic roof failure that is deemed covered by the manufacturer that you guys are still covered. This is required by the state. Also, you know, other small details, we plan to replace the uh, existing skylight. Uh, we plan to modify the existing ac access ladders and such um, to create, again, a 100% code compliant OSHA approved uh, roof replacement for your folks. Um, aside from that, uh, well, first off, may I ask if you guys have any uh, questions regarding the roof design? Uh, uh, Ken, if I may yes. make a comment, just to uh, inform the board, this is the same roof uh, that was put on the uh, middle school. 
So we do have some experience with that roof as opposed to the, the older type of that are put on the other buildings. Right. Typically, that is a wise decision on Sam's behalf. Uh, basically, with the throughout your district, you'd like to keep the same roofing type throughout your school, so that way you don't have quote trained to address, let's just say, a rubberized roof versus a plasticized roof. So that's a fantastic idea on your behalf to keep it consistent throughout the school of the district. Um, I'm Adrian. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got one question. Um, in regards to the insulation, is there yeah. any, is there a benefit to putting more insulation on the roof as far as long-term energy savings? And if, if it's even possible, and I don't know if the design would even accommodate more than five inches of insulation, but um, what I'm getting at is if there's a, if there's a cost benefit to putting um, eight inches or 10 inches <coughs> rather than five inches, and what the um, what the savings might be. So we would re, would we realize that in five years or ten years or never? Well, to be completely honest with you, I do not have the hard numbers in front of me. However, you are correct. Uh, again, we're going from what is existing out there is two inches of insulation. So we're upgrading to five inches of insulation. Excuse me. Um, However, there is an added bonus to that. Uh, we are adding a tapered insulation system, so the average of that insulation is another four inches. So on average, your roof will be just about 40 to 42 our value. Now, to answer your original question, absolutely in the winter time, you'll be able to capture more of the internal heat that won't be escaping through the roof because we are adding um, uh, a, a, a fantastically upgraded system. Again, we're going from two inches to an average of, uh, I'd say, seven or eight inches, which, again, is about an R40 to an R45. So absolutely, you're going to be able to maintain the heat inside. Again, I apologize. I do not have the hard numbers for you, uh, however, I can guarantee you that it will be, there will be a better efficient um, uh, envelope to your facility with the new installation. Ian. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, so my question may be for uh, uh, Sam or everybody involved. Um, with the middle school, the roof, everything was constructed and then it was after the fact uh, we, we chose to put on solar panels. And so my no. question with this project is, should we take the opportunity to uh, consider solar panels or have they been considered? No. They're going to be, the, be this part, is, of the uh, oh, okay. part of this project. I, I didn't see it on the, the list here, so that, that's what I was asking. Yeah, and the reason you'll see later on in the presentation, CSW is our engineering and consultant firm for the PV solar panel installation. Oh, okay. Thank you. So you'll see it, you'll see a, a cost for the roof, and then you'll see a cost for the installation of the solar panels. And, and it'll be a similar, probably not as intrusive an uh, installation as at the middle school, where we had to make uh, quite a few penetrations to uh, hold the system down. This one will be more of a, a balanced system, but CSW can get into those details and answer those questions for you. Right. Recently, the uh, the state has a. Um, given the uh, go-ahead on reimbursement for solar when you're doing the roof. So that's Excellent. why we took this opportunity to take a look at it. All right. Thank you. S Sam, yes. a follow-up. Maybe, maybe um, just to kind of go back to what my question was, is it possible to get an idea of addition, if we were to put actually more insulation, additional cost, and maybe run the calculator to see if there was going to be a substantial savings? Uh, uh, or yeah, is it just have to, I might have, to have the engineers take a look at that. And oh, so it would have to go back to yeah, it would have to go square back. one. All right. Yeah, I'll be yeah, honest with you, we'd, we'd have, have to have our engineers take a look at it and do uh, an additional, additional study, study to it. it. Um, I don't I want to speak for Sam, but um, um, again, we, we've, we've already figured in the, the, the best case scenario for you folks. Um, but again, we could, uh, 
I mean, anything's possible. We can run an analysis for you, however. Um, yeah, I'd have to talk to Tim further regarding that. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I guess, uh, are there any further questions regarding the roof? Uh, I could turn it over to our uh, photovoltaic consultants if uh, they're ready to go. Sure. Hi, everyone. Eric Obert here with CSW Energy. Um, you, so this slide that you're seeing right now, um, this is uh, from Silver Pump Kelly. They basically did a roof legend, which kind of categorized each roof. Um, you see roof A is this little small uh, ancillary um, awning or whatever it is. Roof B will be the mostly uh, where we'll talk about the solar. Roof C um, is another small roof. And then roof D, um, which I, we'll go into the presentation, but there was no capacity to put solar on roof D, so we focused um, entirely on roof B, and you can see our design, preliminary design, um, in the picture photo on the left. Um, so you can go to the next slide. All right. Um, so yeah, this is just uh, the introduction of the, our part of the presentation. Um, next slide, please. Hmm. Can you, go to, can you go to the next slide? I don't know. Is he not seeing it? Do you, you see, see the there? slides? Can you see which one we're on? Yeah. yeah I, I, what I, I see, see is uh, the intro slide, slide, slide like Broad Public, Public Schools, School, Dr. Dr. Charles G. Barnum School. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so this, this is an example, example of just of another school, um, what the kind of the panels will look like on the roof. Um, you can see that the TPO, this is the white roof. Um, and I can explain that a little bit more. So. <laughs> By going by with the white roof, the, white roof, um, the solar, solar panels we expect for this project, this project are actually bifacial, bifacial panels, panels, so they, so they get production, production um, directly on top of the solar panel, panels, and then, and then um, the actually, actually roof will reflect enough, enough to um, increase, uh, increase the production on the bottom side of the panel, panel um, as long as we use a white roof. roof. So, so there is there added, added um, a, production a production on the actual solar panel, and then as we'll go into the numbers, we can actually claim um, some credits from the uh, government. That's just a direct pay for the portion of the roof that is um, under the solar because they, basically the roof becomes part of the solar array. Right? Wow. I like that. Um, so yeah, just, yeah, so you'll see some extra savings and we broke that out um, in one of our last slides. So there's actually two meters. Um, at, at the school, school. So, so we optimize, optimize each, each, this, this this one, one project. project it'll, it'll be one, one total array, array but it'll actually have um, two, two interconnection, interconnection points into the school, for one for each meter. meter. And we design the system to basically max out the production to match um, the peak demand at each of the two meters. Um, so. You have the meter numbers, uh, you guys don't care about that. The product size, so that's in kilowatts, um, 129.8 63.8. And then this is the production you'll see, um, kilowatt hours, based on each side. Um, and again, this is uh, to minimize the amount of exporting, because you guys are, have garage has their own utility and there's no net metering. So I don't know if anyone has solar in their house or is familiar with it, but if you overproduce with Eversource and UI and you have a net metering, you can bank your credits, credits and then basically on months where you don't produce enough, enough instead of buying power, you just take off your bank. bank. Groton does not have that. They actually, you would be selling any excess power to the utility at a pretty low rate. So we try to minimize that as much as possible while maintaining um, the least amount of power you'd have to purchase from the utility company. Um, so you can go to the next slide. All right. So, so Silver so Kelly did a uh, a structural analysis on this building. Um, as you can see, we have roof A, roof B, roof C, and roof D. Um, and then there's, in the photo on the right, where there's the solar panel. It's kind of hard, a little hard to see, but on the top left, and then on the top right, you can see the yellow, little yellow um, sectioned off areas. I'm not sure exactly why, but there was no capacity to put solar there, so we kind of had to move some panels around. Um, and then roof D had no capacity, so. This is just it kind of shows you roof B had six pounds of square foot, which will allow us to 
with the confidence to say we're going to fully balance it. it. Um, there it might be a couple penetrations, but that will all be done by the roofer who does the re-roof, completely under warranty, um, and we'll work with the manufacturer. We'll provide an overburden waiver, which um, is very standard for every roofing manufacturer. Uh, they'll typically come out, they'll take a look at it, they'll approve the install, and they'll make sure that the warranty is 100% maintained based on our installation. Um, so this will have, this will have no impact on any warranty issues. Um, one thing, if you do guys want to go potentially to find out about the extra um, insulation, there is some weight component to that. I know with today's technology, obviously, it doesn't weigh a lot, but there will be an added weight up to inches of insulation, which potentially could lower the um, capacity. That's not going to do anything in the solar, except maybe add a couple more attachments in certain areas. Um, but again, it's very standard practice to have attachments if we need them, and they're all be done um, in accordance with manufacturer's guidelines and by a certified roofer who did the roof. All right, you can continue on to the next slide. So yeah, as I mentioned before, ground utility has no net meter, um, so there's no credit for later use. Um, all the power is produced is gonna be used right at the school, um, and we'll show in the next slide as an avoided cost when we break it down. Um, anything that's sent to the utility, so um, on a day where you're not using a lot of power, the sun's pumping, um, anything that's sent to them, you sell, to them and you get a little bit of money back at a three and a half cent kilowatt hour, which isn't great. Um, so we tried to mi minimize that as best as possible based on the system size. Um, and then there's no incentive program, uh, so we didn't calculate any of that through, which they have in other utility companies, but there's none with uh, Grind. Next slide, please. All right, so this is, if you guys have questions, um, feel free to speak up and let me know the lot of numbers. We're kind of trying to explain them as best as possible. So the projected budget we have for the solar side is just under 700,000. Uh, the DAS reimbursement uh, will be right around 60%, just under it. And that's um, just a grant right back to you guys. The IRA direct pay uh, is a program, the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, you'll get 30% um, direct pay right to you guys. So that's right off the top. Um, the uh, rate of return is 13%, and the buyback or the payback period for the solar is about four years. And then we kind of broke down the energy cost. So this is your current electricity rate is just over 11 cents. Um, the export rate is three and a half. And then based on historical data, um, pretty much across the country, there's usually a 3% escalation in um, your cost for electricity. Um, so we kind of factor that into our model. And as you can see, we have the build cost for just 698,000. And then in year one, uh, based on the system size uh, and the historical data, we, with our software, you can uh, basically, it will show you the production per um, year. So we basically show exactly how much we produce, how much is consumed, and then how much is exported. Your void cost in year one would be about $14,000 that you would not be paying to Groton Utility. You'd actually be making $3,800 selling them the power that is overproduced. You'd get your DAS reimbursement of $414,000, and then you'd get a $210,000 check directly from the government. So as you can see, after year one, you're only into the solar for $57,000. And as you can see, as we continue down, um, one thing that always throws people for a little bit of a loop is, as you can see in the avoiding cost, it's 14,000 in year one, 20,000 in year 20, or 22,000. This is strictly because as the system loses about 0.5% uh, production per year, your rate is gonna go up year over year. So by year 20, you're actually saving more money um, than you would be in year one because we're the, the power will cost more money. Um, so as you can see, by the end of this project, 20 years, um, and that's not the end, that's just, um, we went along with how long the roof was warranted for, but these panels are good for 25, 30 years, so um, if you keep, if you extrapolated this data and kept going, um, you'll continue to see savings on this um, every year after year until, give or take, year 30. I'll pause right here because I know there's a lot. Does anyone have any on this specific slide? 
<clears throat> if I may, sorry to interrupt. Uh, this presentation is in all of your inboxes to your Groton Public Schools email. Sam and I put it there right before, so so you had it. Matthew. I had uh, two questions for you, if I might. Uh, eventually, in 30 years, or hopefully 45 years, because the figure a way to extend it, this, this panels will come to the end of their life. Uh, if I remember correctly, on the project that we did before, where it was a lease, a lease arrangement where we didn't own the panels, the removal of the panels and the disposal of the panels was covered by that company. What's the situation for uh, who's responsible for the panels at the end of the life? So that would be you guys. So, so this, this you guys would be owning, owning it. it. Um, there, there is an added, added um, operations, operations and maintenance agreement, agreement that we don't do, but you can add on with another company, company and they, they can handle it. that. Um, we recommend <laughs> probably getting that. It's probably a couple thousand dollars a year. It's not necessarily due every year, but um, there is. It is good to just get someone out and just make sure it's producing as optimally as possible. There are warranties on all the product products. Um, so a lot of the time, if anything did fail, you'll get that covered. There will be a monitoring link. Um, that typically in a school like this, what we'll do is we'll come in, we'll have the, um, whoever's actually building it, they'll put a TV, dedicated TV somewhere, office, uh, front lobby, cafeteria, where you'll be able to see the link and you'll be able to actually see how much it's producing on any given day. Um, and then you would notice, hey, the system's not operating correctly. You would reach out, you could reach out to someone. Um, after the workmanship warranty is expired, they would do their due diligence. But in terms of, hey, 30 years from now, the system's just not working. It's completely at the end of its life. Uh, it would be on you guys to um, remove. And I would assume that the roof would be at the promise warranty during around the same period. Um, so. It would kind of just be another, hey, we got to do this again, and here is, um, it would just be kind of included in that, if that answers your question. Uh, supplemental question. Um, you referred to a uh, possible, I'll call it an insurance policy or a supplemental warranty. Does that supplemental warranty on end of life uh, disposal have a particular name in the trade? What, what would so we be operations and maintenance is, is typically your like quote unquote insurance you just get in someone else on the site year after year, year to just they can test all the wires they're called string wires they can test all those they can get all the data and just make sure that everything is operating like again 100 percent as it should given the year of um their trip so obviously um, as you can see, the production goes down, uh, so there are going to be um, some factors that the the a little different year 20 versus year three. I do have a second question, but if somebody else wants to go first, I can wait. Uh, I recognize Beverly. Uh, thank you, Jamie. Um, can you discuss what kind of warranty comes with the part of the work that you do? Yep. Yeah, so there's also a workmanship warranty, uh, which is typically two years. Uh, that's directly from the electrician who's installing it. Um, so they're maintaining that everything they did is under warranty for two years. Um, all the equipment is different. Uh, the panels are typically a 25-year warranty. The inverters are about a 10-year Um and the racking is just steel. I, I can tell you exactly what each one is. So we're, 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 our role right now is we designed it. We're, we're providing you guys all the analysis on doing it. We'll go out to bid. Um, and the goal, ultimate goal of that would be to get people the cost cheaper than the 700000 This is what we basically are saying is worst case. And we plan, the, the goal would be to beat that. They'll redesign this with these parameters that we've designed it for. And the individual products that they use um, will all be tier one, um, right up the Bloomberg list. Uh, so it might not, every product might be a little bit different. It might have just a little bit different warranties, but they're all top tier um, products. So every piece kind of has a different warranty. And again, it's nothing's been selected definitively at this time. But you're looking at the inverters, a 10-year warranty, and then the panels, which are the, obviously the biggest part, those are a 25-year warranty. 
pretty much across the board. Thank you. Uh, and may I add to, uh, of course, the uh, Pierce Bailey who comes from the state who has given you these candles as you buy them outright at your current reimbursement rate. Yeah, so yeah, we have one, one another one slide, slide next, um, that kind of shows. Um, actually, we have a couple more questions. Uh, Jen Perfect. and then Matthew. Um, I'm not sure if yeah. the person who presented on the roofing section is still on but with oh, us yep, okay <laughs> but with us putting this solar panel on the roof would that um invalidate some of the warranty or is that in just because like obviously um i'm assuming the roof probably would never have been intended to have solar panels well, I so can speak to that. okay um, so the roof, ultimately, um, Silver Fence Co. will put this up the bid. They'll select the roofer. The roofer will go out and install it. Anytime we have to do any, like, even say, hey, on the roof, something sharp cuts a slot in the roof. We'll, mm -hmm. The direct roofer who did it will come out, patch it completely. So they're the, they're the ones who hold the warranty. They'll maintain the warranty throughout. We'll also work with the actual roofing manufacturer um, since solar is across the board, um, very accepted. It's called an overburden waiver, which is basically goes on top of their warranty. They'll come out and do a site visit, sometimes before, sometimes after, or always after, and they'll come out and check. And there's always a protective layer, so on the balanced systems, we'll actually order the exact roofing material, we'll cut it um, into uh, squares big enough that any any piece of equipment that's touching your roof will not actually be touching the roof. It'll be touching an extra membrane um, on top of that extra added level of protection. And like I said, the overburden waiver will get signed by the roofer and then they'll um, maintain the warranty. They acknowledge the solar's on it and they'll re basically reissue the warranty with solar. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Yeah, and if yeah. I can just add to that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they, yeah, as mentioned, they, they absolutely encourage these systems. Thanks, Ken. Uh, if I can just add to that, um, it was only a few weeks ago that I was on the roof of both Middle School and um, Mystic River mm -hmm. uh, going through the inspection process with the, with the original roofing company, uh, the manufacturers, so that they come along and uh, make sure that all the things that the, he was talking about were, were done correctly. They, they actually came down before they started the project, mm -hmm. and then they come in again at the end of the project to make sure that it's installed uh, as, as specified. So, okay. And the other thing he was talking about, um, that they actually, it's a double layer on any part that actually touches the roof. So they actually cut out pieces and have a second uh, layer mm -hmm. underneath those parts that are touching the roof. So it's roof to roof, roofing material to roofing material on those spots. Yeah, so nothing being yeah. installed will actually be on your physically touching any part of the actual roof. There'll be okay. another four millimeters or whatever it is between uh, that membrane. That's actually good to hear because I didn't want to get into a situation, let's say 10 years from now or 15 years from now, everyone's going, we're not covering anything. So, well, okay. that should provide you a letter of a day that does confirm that with the roofer. Okay, and great. confirms the warranty based on his inspection to Sam said. Perfect. Thank you for that. Matthew, did you have a follow-up? I did have a follow-up question. Um, the question will expose my ignorance, so please... Uh, be used to it, it's not to be a wise guy. I could have said something less desirable than that, I suppose. Um, panel sourcing and number of vendors engaged. Um, it's my understanding that lots of panels, the majority of panels are made offshore, uh, many of them in PRC. And looking ahead 15, 20 years, we have no idea what our relationship will be with with that source of that source. So I'm wondering where your where the panels that you're looking at would be originally sourced. Would they be U.S. manufactured or uh, Canadian or uh, or other? That's the first question. And the second is there are a number of uh, pieces that work, work together. You mentioned the panels. You mentioned the inverter. I don't know what other elements there are. I'm ignorant. 
but uh, could that leave us in a situation where each one is pointed to the other one as being responsible for a problem? Are we going to get it from a single vendor? How do we minimize or mitigate the, the risks of uh, you know, pointing this way for help? I'm going in two directions. Right, so mm -hmm. for, for your first, first question, question um, again, again, really the only requirement is to be tier one, one and tier, tier one could be coming out of Asia. There's Canadian, Canadian there are US. US. Um, it's really gonna be the cost, but the um, United States panels are coming down. Um, there's, again, so when we don't, we're not actually sourcing them, we'll hire, um, we'll put it up to bid and hire another solar company that should handle the entire um, install. Uh, they're very competitive on those modules being made in the United States. I can't guarantee that they're gonna be from there, um, but all the tier ones are big players who have been around for a very long time, so I don't know if they're really, I don't, I'm not gonna say there isn't a concern that in 15 years, who knows, um, but there are stops of these um, panels pretty much all over the country that have already made stateside, if they are from there, um, and a lot of these um, vendors who sell these panels um, have stock, plenty of stock, and, and so I don't, uh, I have I no idea how the, uh, I, I have no idea how the other board members feel. It would be my personal desire that if a the, the lowest cost vendor was a uh, Asian vendor that we at least get a price for a onshore vendor so we can look at whether the differential is worth uh, is worth considering. So that is something, that is something, we, something we can definitely look, look at, at basically, basically as, as as we go through the process, put that as a requirement. Um, I'd have to run the numbers um, and basically see if there would be any added cost to do that. But again, as I mentioned, the, this is like a worst case budget. Um, so the goal is obviously to beat that. So say the panels are, everything is done in price per watt, which is a solar way to calculate it. If it's five cents in price per watt, you're probably not gonna see it go over this budget, so. So, so Eric, that could be, oh, excuse me, that could be just as simple as putting an alternate in the bid package. Correct, and like right. we can have them price in both ways and do one of those things where we say, hey guys. An alternate, so you can see both. Domestic, it's gonna be price X, and if you want, and then international might be this, and then it's just really up to how you got, what your level of comfort is, and, and if it costs a little bit more, are you willing to spend that? Thank you very much. Uh, Jay, if I could jump in? Yes. Um, <clears throat> along that same line of thinking, um, another bit of information that I would like to see in this package would be uh, what manufacturers have union shops and which ones are not. Uh, I can answer to that. Um, all our state uh, reimbursed projects are absolutely required uh, to have prevailing wage, and we we have a, a sample certificate for that in our bid package, so that is uh, absolutely accounted for. Were you more? Were you asking about the panel? being installed or manufactured for prevailing wage or the actual project, this project specifically? Um, all well, the I guess both uh, panels, the manufacturer of the panels and also the installers. That well, the installers are required to follow prevailing wage. Unfortunately, we can't follow the manufacturer because that's just too far out of our grasp. However, our specifications do require a certain criteria for the utmost uh, um, uh, uh, best, uh, you know, uh, 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 systems for you folks, so. <laughs> yeah, so all the numbers that you'll see, again, this project total cost, and then the next slide, which will show the whole package, uh, re-roof and solar, that's all factored in prevailing wage work. Okay, thank you. Is there another page, Clint, did he say? Yes. Yep. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so okay. 
All right, so this um, the reimbursement, uh, again, you have the state grant and then the federal IRA direct pay. Uh, so that's right under uh, 90%. Um, as you can see for the portion of the roof that's eligible for the uh, federal direct pay, you have the total square area of the roof is uh, 30,600. The solar footprint that we currently have, again, it might be a little bit larger based on the final design, but based off the preliminary design that we have is 9,800 uh, square feet, so it's about 32% of the roof. Um, so 32% of the roof um, will be 30% kickback. So as you can see, the upfront cost, um, again, these are the primary budget numbers, uh, 1200 or 1.2 million for the roof, 700,000 for the uh, solar, 1.9 million combined. The um, DAS, State of Connecticut, will provide a grant for 1.1 million, and then direct pay right from the government uh, for the roof portion uh, is 115,000. Again, that's because we're able to use the white roof, um, and it actually integrates it and calls it part of the solar array. And then the solar will receive direct 30% uh, for a combined 325,000 from the federal government. And then the out-of-pocket costs after everything is said and done um, will be about 373,000 for the roof, 75,000 for the solar, and uh, just under 450,000 combined. And as you saw in the last slide, um, the forecasted uh, cash flow that you guys would receive for the lifetime of the solar for the first 20 years is about 380,000. Um, and then obviously if that continues on to year 30, um, the solar will basically cover all the expenses of these projects. Wow. What was the, what was the town expecting back from the million as revenue? What was the town expecting back? The, out of this million would, dollar the town would have got about 40 percent back because okay it would have been, wow. the solar wouldn't have been involved so it would have been a 59.29 percent reimbursement on the roof only okay all right well this is even better yes it is <laughs> but it's again you have to it's the overall project money that has to be in place so right that would right be a bug of roof, you know? yeah to get the to pay for it up front and then get the reimbursement you're right that's correct. Um, if I could ask, how long, um, historically speaking, how long does it take for the reimbursement to come back after a project is complete? It, if we if we can use the school as an example, we are able to submit monthly, and we generally get some payback during that month. We may not get 100 percent of what we spend that month, and then there's an audit at the end, which the schools get to go through. So. You'll see some return on uh, what the outpay is as the project goes along, at least from the state perspective. Uh, maybe Eric can tell us about the federal and the IRA when you expect to see that being. Yeah, so for federal and IRA, so if we can complete this project and build, do the roof over the summer, um, and then finish the solar in 2024, um, the IRA would come. Uh, in 2025, and then if we had to wait until, say, next summer to do the solar or whatnot, that wouldn't come to 2026. So it's basically when you um, do your taxes is when uh, they issue that refund. It's not a refund, it's just a direct pay. Thank you. Any other questions on this, or we can, the next slide is um, one, one more financial question. Uh, in the event, um, and you may not have the answer for it, in the event there were a change in the national government and there were a change in policy, would they honor a program that was started under Administration A, even if Administration B were in power when the project was over? if we were approved on Administration A, because I'd hate to find the rules change and leave us with a canoe and no paddles. I don't know if I can answer that. <laughs> that that's a crystal ball. Uh, <laughs> I would say that the goal, goal would, be would be to get it done in 2024 and we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm with you, brother. Uh, I don't know if I can, I don't <laughs> I can't, I, got, I don't know. Um, I would think they would honor it. I don't, again, 
Can you do the entire question. project in 2024, roof and solar? Is that is that feasible? Yeah, so if we go to the next slide, that's exactly what this slide covers. Um, and definitely we'll have a bigger conversation about it. So um, this is um, going like, to the gain, next like, slide. We gained a month. So this this is um this was created, which we see the date of the months on the bottom. This was created assuming we had the uh, uh, finance committee meeting tomorrow. Um, and we weren't gonna be able to get into you get in front of you guys for another couple of weeks and then it pushed it out. The fact that we're here now, um, we potentially could get all the uh, approvals through the town um, basically the beginning of April. Uh, so we're, we're, we'll have a lot of meetings in the next couple of weeks, but that's good. Um, we'll be able to submit for the grant uh, in April. So we can gain an extra month on that. It takes about, I would say, three weeks to a month for them to get their approval. Um, the state PCR meeting, and then some Petrocelli can go out for bid, um, potentially May, June. Um, and then hopefully we can get the roof part installed July, August. Um, now, the solar, we're very non intrusive. Um, the biggest impact we're installing in Stratford right now and have been um, during the school year. Uh, we need a couple parking spaces, store some material, and then we'll have like a piece of equipment on site that loads the roof. Once all the equipment's loaded on the roof, it's very minimally invasive. We've heard no complaints from teachers for like noise or anything. Um, so we can build in the fall. And if we can start as soon as the roof's done in say August, September, we can have this thing done in 2024. What I hear you say, what I'm, sorry, go ahead. What I, what I'm hearing you say between the words is that supply chain delays are not an issue. Am I hearing you correctly? No. That is correct. Yeah, so I'm not seeing any issues. That lately. No, everything's pretty ready to go. That's bad with the Chinese material. Eric, this is yeah. Sam. So uh, this, this schedule you're talking about right now uh, is based on the fact that, um, well, first of all, we're not gonna, the board is not gonna vote tonight on this. Am I correct? No. They can't vote on this tonight. It would have to be at the next board meeting. Which is the end of this, yeah, in a next couple week, weeks. Right? Week. Next, next week. week. Next, next, next week. week tonight, right. Uh, next week. What happened to this month? Uh -huh. It's the next board meeting. Yeah, next yeah. week. It's next yeah, week. Yeah, the 25th. Yeah. So, so this this is Rick again, um, and obviously I'm, I'm I'm the pusher and I help Sam push this stuff along. Um, and I think it was really beneficial that we could come to the committee of the whole tonight and ask if at all possible that they look at this at the next board meeting because that allows us to move forward and be able to potentially to complete the project. I, I might also. Uh, Say, Sam, say something if I'm talking out of school. We actually did some of the work on the elementary and middle school while school was in session. It was once the materials were put up during during a calm in the storm of the two schools, it was minimally invasive as the panels were being installed. And this should be even less so because there'll be fewer you know, drillings into the roof. Uh, There'll be more insulation now in the roof, so it should be quieter inside. But we've also been able to work schedules with the contractors to work around school schedules too. So uh, I guess my my request is, if at all possible, we could look at this next week and see where we go from there, because then we have to go, obviously have to go into the council, get them to approve the grant request, right? And then, Probably the board of, I mean, probably their committee of the whole first and the council. So uh, we've still got a few uh, boxes to check before we can submit a grant. Right. Uh, I, I agree, Rick. Um, I, I think we had very few concerns uh, about the uh, solar project during school hours at either of the other two schools. Um, but I think this one might even be less intrusive because I think Eric told us that the racking system, which is the structure that gets put on the roof before the pan that the panels get set on, those would actually be installed while the roof is being installed, Eric. Is that correct? No, no so they're so not um, um, attached. So, so they'll, they'll basically be put, put down. down. Once the roof is done and yep. we our, our ability to go out and start, um, they'll put that 
um, membrane down as that's called a slip sheet. They'll put um, the actual racking together. Um, there's many different, sometimes it's a plastic um, tray basically that you put cement blocks on top of that, or it's like a metal system, fully metal system that will support the uh, concrete blocks as well. But we won't be able to start that until the roof is done. Yeah, and if all goes well, we should have uh, the roof done by the mid to end of August. That is in a perfect world, that is. But yes, as Derek mentioned, we don't plan on cutting any holes into the roof. Uh, the, the, the actual PV going down is a standalone and, and the roof, aside from the roof. All right. Well, we could talk about the details of the schedule later on, but uh, if it's a, uh, it's a uh, three or four part roof, uh, maybe we can move that uh, racking system along as we move along on those roofs. But we can talk about that later. The, the racking part, so just to clarify, the racking part doesn't take very long to right. install. Um, you almost look like you have a full solar array a couple weeks into the project. It's the electrical side um, that actually takes the longest part. A system this size, they could probably have all the components in physical place without wiring within maybe two weeks. Oh, wow. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> and <clears throat> how long would the wiring? <laughs> how long would the wiring part of the project take after that? I would say about a month. Give or take. Uh, so you're probably talking about two two months, uh, realistically, um, from the time they start mobilized. It's usually a slow first week. They're getting their equipment. They're loading it onto the roof. Um, but once they get going, um, you know, I mean, again, you're probably talking about a two month total time frame for the solar portion, a system this size. <clears throat> Would it be working for the winter time to save us some money? <laughs> 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 that would be the goal. So as soon as, okay. as, soon as we can get uh, the approval from Cotton Utility, we'll turn that on. Um, <laughs> and yeah, hopefully we'll get we'll get you some savings uh, at the end of this year for sure. And then hopefully no more snow next year. So right. keep producing. But it does produce your snow. Um, it it will produce even if there's snow. It's obviously not as good, great as it does not, but. Um, it also helps with white roof. It gets warmer um, yeah. through the panels and That's helps true. melt uh, in the specific areas, yeah. depending on you're not getting two feet or anything. All right. Unless there are any other questions, I know we all received the email with uh, the presentation that we can study, and um, I don't see why we can't put it on the agenda for mm -hmm. next Monday. Sounds good. Thank you very much. I think this Thank worked you. out well. <clears throat> Yes, it will. And this, this is recall. Um, Susan is also the first uh, 4A where the Board of Education will own the panel. So we do need to do some uh, work on getting that operation maintenance agreement in place and we'll work through that with the folks because this is a case where the electric company forces the, the homeowner or building owner or whatever to own the panels not have an independent uh, uh, company or whatever generate the power. So this uh, this will be your first experience in the Groton Utility area with the uh, solar on the building. And isn't Groton Utilities responsible for Thames River? No. Oh, no? No, no. no we would have to go through the same process as this with Thames River. Oh, that's what I mean. And that's, and that's, that's, why, that brought, that's why that school hadn't been pushed forward with the other two. So this is a... This is an experiment is, to try this out. <laughs> yeah, this is a, well, test, case. test case. It's yeah, a smaller, test case. smaller roof. And, and, yeah. uh, we want to make sure that the board's comfortable with uh, the mm -hmm. ownership of the panels and the maintenance, that sort of thing. Okay. Right. Well, thank you very much. We yeah, appreciate thanks. such short notice to pull this thank off, you. but thank, thank you. Thank you for letting us present. Yep. Look forward yep. to um, putting the door you. on your school. Thank yeah. you. Yep. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you again, folks. Uh, have a good night. Thank, thank you, you, Ken. Thank you, Eric. Uh, and Rick thank from you. Redondo Beach. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Rick. Funny Thanks to the Rick. magic of Zoom. Yeah, right? <laughs> yes, that's right. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
I think the your CIPs is CIPs. pretty short. Yeah, CIPs are pretty short. So um, <laughs> Not I, much I, went through. I, I met with the Planning Commission, mm -hmm. um, and uh, of the uh, seven uh, projects that were submitted, uh, there was only one that we were allowed to discuss because only one uh, was uh, moved forward by the town manager, I believe, and that is the Fitch High School uh, Auditorium project, which includes lighting, sound, and uh, projection upgrades. And so um, no others were allowed to be discussed, although I did, I was able to um, kind of off the record discuss the culinary arts upgrades uh, and the planning commission seemed to be, in my opinion, um, understanding of the fact that kids at Fitch High School might also like to have some experience in that and not necessarily have to go to the uh, tech school in order to get that. And that was and, because uh, of my was friend Kevin Fiftel. Especially, yeah, as I was <laughs> going to say, uh, especially uh, supported by Kevin Fiftel, who is yeah. a uh, mystic resident and uh, local and, and part of that group. So uh, he was very supportive. So um, while I didn't make the cut, uh, they're aware of it. I didn't seem to be opposed to it, but again, that would be something that. I do know that we want to go for the HVAC grant, which is due in December, and there will be um, uh, there the, uh, an expectation that the town will cover some of the cost. It's like a reimbursement, similar to what we just saw. So I think that we'll have to make sure that the town council knows that, you know, with this grant process, we'll be coming back to them to say that, you know, and I asked Sam, can you get a CIP mid-year? Can you say that this is going to cost X amount of dollars, but this is the reimbursement rate, um, and we would need them to sign off on that should we submit a grant? Oh, yeah, because we have to do and those state-mandated uh, inspections or else we can't even submit for the well, grant. That's true, too. So, and right. we got to get on somebody's calendar for that right. once we know we have the money. Right. Can I ask? Jen. Oh. And then, yeah. That was my question about the oh. HVAC. Like, if they right. didn't even offer it up, they were mad at you for <laughs> not We've submitted those grants before. It, but you have to have their... Um, you know, allegiance to support it. You yes. have to fund it before you can submit mm -hmm. it. Submit for the reimbursement. So if it didn't even get approved, how are we going to even submit for the grant? Well, we're we planning on -year? going forward with the grant, but I think yeah. we need to go back to the town council and say, if we do submit this, this is what we need from you. Okay. And good news on the Fitch. Um, um, Auditorium. Auditorium. Is long overdue. M long overdue. Mm -hmm. So at least that one made it through. And that's a Peg Pisha, is that also? Uh, Peg Pisha is doing more of the funding for the equipment that we're doing in here. Okay. So we do move some of that equipment into... <laughs> Sorry, I'll be super fast. <laughs> the equipment bought to date with Peg Pisha is what you're seeing now, and we've been able to use some, move some of that into the auditorium. This would allow us to upgrade that equipment there as well. Um, and Peg Pisha 2024 supplements that and complements oh, that. Oh, that's right. That's but we won't know. know about that until May. Okay. So. All right, good. Um, so just to, this is my first time coming through this process on, on this side of the fence. Um, could you just uh, explain to me what you mean by the town manager did not allow for discussion? And also to be clear, the planning commission, the, you're referring to the planning and zoning commission? That's correct. Okay. Planning commission, yeah. So um, I believe the pro that, well, the process is that we submit it to the town and then the town manager moves those forward to the planning commission for their review after the planning commission it goes back to the town council and the rtm i believe that's the full process so um my understanding is that it didn't make it beyond the town manager's uh, office well, i guess that's what i'm, I'm he seeing. wasn't at the meeting he didn't say that we couldn't talk about it right um, they determined that what we're able to talk about is what is what has been approved to move forward Right, so I, I, that's what I'm seeing clarity on is, is the town manager did not allow for the majority of the CIPs to be discussed even as a theoretical possibility, uh, never mind approval. No, I don't, no I, don't, I don't think the town manager said anything about that. That was the town, town planning commission. When I went to the planning commission, they said these are the items that we're allowed to discuss, and you had one item to discuss. I guess I'm not understanding the breakdown because we had – 
what, seven? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have seven items that we submitted to the town manager. Right. And then what happened between the town manager's office and the Planning and Zoning Commission saying we can only discuss one? Is it just because of jurisdiction or because of the scope of the project? Well, I'm not the only one there at that meeting. There, there's mm -hmm. um, Public Works and then there's Parks and Rec, et cetera. So there are other groups that are making presentations too for the items that they want to have uh, in the CIP. So um, I believe that the Planning Commission has decided, I mean, I don't know, I wasn't at their meeting, um, to discuss this, but the, the items that move forward from the level of the town manager, those are the items that they're able to review. Right, so I guess I'm trying to, I'm trying to determine the decision-making <coughs> process. The town manager did not move these items forward. That's my understanding. Okay. Because I have questions and concerns, and I want to know who I need to ask. Well, we've done our part. We've submitted it to the town, um, you know, and then this planning and zoning was the next step, and that was the right, one the thing that they... the town manager has put a hard filter on the number of CIPs that are... Well, I think he has X amount of dollars, and he's trying to, like you said, there's other departments there. Mm -hmm. But I do think that um, we need to make it clear out of the gate that should we want to go for this HVAC grant, which I think we should, um, that we're going to need their support in doing so. And they need well, to have an advance notice so that they we, can kind of prepare. We, we, we don't need their support. We need them to actually approve. Approve it, right. The bonding, right? Right. right. Because when we submitted the, the, the last grant application, there was no bonding in place, so it, it failed on its on its merits and furthermore there's the added complication now that the state has added this this level of um, right scrutiny inspection mm -hmm. which now all districts have to do and it's it, until we get an approved budget that we know we have the money to do them we can't even get anybody's calendar and that was a big number in our budget i don't remember exactly what it was Sam. okay yeah for which project? Unfunded mandates. Oh, oh, oh for the uh, for, the, for the, inspections. the inspection. Yeah. The inspection. So I'm, I'm not arguing the merits. 25. Right. No, the inspection there are merits. Is important, but mm -hmm. it's an unfunded mandate. Um. Okay. So, as far as um, well, I had a question. I, I guess I misunderstood the CIP item on the agenda. I had a question about uh, CIP, I think, from last year. Um, just uh, I was looking for a progress update. Can I ask about that? About a progress update on? Um, the Grant Middle School uh, scoreboard uh, the, for the turf field. Was that a, I was was that a CIP? That, uh, that or was that CIP. part of it? It wasn't no. a CIP? No, it's no. not a CIP. That came out of the bond. From, from balance, the, right? The balance, uh, yes. And the town council authorized us to spend money for the lighting for the projects. And the two price, the pricing for the scoreboards just went, uh, Rick isn't on anymore. But that was just forwarded to the town manager today to see how we can uh, pay for them. So we don't have an answer on that yet? Official field and on the softball field. Okay. So that's in process now? It, it, was, just, it was just sent to the town manager today, yeah. Okay. I, I don't remember the exact number. It was under just under fifty thousand dollars for the two. I think it might have been for the forty two boards? something. I, okay. I think initially we thought it was going to be around fifteen each, but it, it came in a little. The estimates came in a little bit higher than that. All right. So they were just estimates, but that would also include fully installed. Mm -hmm. So that's waiting on the town manager to to approve that funding, or. I, I, I guess we have to determine where the, he has to determine where the money would come from and, and whether it's available or not. Okay. I know Thank in the you. past he's reached out to the bond attorney for a ruling. Yeah, on whether they we have seen that. that. Bonding. Dean? Yeah, to the extent that there's a question about Mark's, Mark, I'm sorry, going back in time. Um, yeah. John's role, town manager's role. Um, I was curious since I looked up the section within the child charter. Uh, that deals with the town manager and proposed capital projects, and it seems to, or maybe read it, but it seems to basically put it to him to decide mm -hmm. what to recommend to the council. So he seems to have the discretion, which is my recollection from dealing with the town manager in the past, 
the council code has put stuff back in, but mm -hmm. he's the first filter. So uh, estimates of, of the cost of such projects will be submitted by each department, departmental function, office, or agency, including the BOB, annually in the form and manner prescribed by the town manager. The town manager shall recommend to the council those projects to be undertaken during the ensuing fiscal year. That is a finding. Oh, state. you turn that on. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to start all over again. I'll summarize by saying this, that I, this, there's a specific, again, to the extent that there's a question about the town manager's function, there's a spe specific provision within, I'm sorry, my day and night are backwards because of travel, uh, so I'm starting to lose it badly. Uh, but the, the town charter, 9.1.3, does deal with proposed capital projects and the town manager's function. He appears to be the filter that all departments, including the Board of Education, have to go through. He recommends whatever he cares to recommend. The council, of course, could override, but they could also just go along. So he could say, you get one, and that's it. That seems to be his function. Um, like I said, to the extent that there was a question about his authority or, um, I'll just bring that up. Now I can turn it off. All right. So if there are no further questions. Uh, I guess we're on to the referral list. Did you do this last week? No. Oh, we we usually wait till the second cow. Okay. For some reason I was told Joyce said that that's how it was done. So. Well, Joyce would know. <laughs> so probably the new members have been going through this, but I think you've received it in email. Um, so this is where we um, track everyone's referral until it's um, placed on an agenda. The policy is uh, on, on our current uh, um, tracking sheet, uh, review a policy for student cell phone use during instructional time. It's listed as future committee meeting. The discussion will start at the April meeting. And I guess we're adding recording of BOE committee meetings for uh, discussion at the April meeting. Um, well, it's no. <laughs> Depends. If it's, if it's voted on, I guess, next week. What are you looking at me for? Week. Well, because. Because <laughs> Bev's not here in the room. <laughs> <laughs> you, it seems like you brought it up. Bev. Bev. <laughs> She's anyway. not going to save you. <laughs> but there, uh, it, 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 I'm sorry Bev's not here, so please. Uh, I'm here. Oh, I'm good. Here. Yeah, good. Good. I'm good, here. good, good. I was going to ask somebody us? to be sure I, I said it in a way that was clear. Uh, it was always the intention that anything that our committee and hopefully any committee recommends or wants to do must come back to the board for full discussion before there's a vote taken. And the, the idea that we wanted to come to, on, on the other issue, which we're not going to get into, that we wanted to come to float a new topic before the board was merely to see if the board reaction is, Matthew, you're off your rocker. Better to know now than to spend weeks and weeks before we come. But it was always the intention that everything comes back to the board. And in policy, it comes back double. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Before it goes mm -hmm. through. And it may be even more. <laughs> Um, a note on the policy committee agenda, this doesn't include active items, right? This is just future referrals? No, these are just, yeah, things that had been put on. Okay. So, yeah. And they're even dated. Um, along the lines of the finance facilities um, referrals, I see the discussion establishing a non-lapsing fund. Um, one, uh, a thought occurred to me during discussion. Um, I know that... The last board voted to change the bylaws to uh, disallow members from participating as ex officio in committee work. People that are not on the committee, members cannot jump in to join the discussion. Um, however, I think there is something that we may need to consider where if a board member makes a referral on which they have done a substantial amount of research already, 
and could speak to that referral with some articulation. Um, and that referral goes to, goes to a committee where that member is not part of that committee. There's a, an inherent breakdown where that committee may not be able to do the best diligence um, moving forward uh, with like generating a report and a recommendation without the input of the member, the general board member who is not part of that committee. As chair of the finance facilities committee, you, I welcome you to present this to that one of our seen. meetings. I have no problem with that at <laughs> all. Appreciate it. Thank you. I think the the uh, the the problem with just allowing like all board members to go to a finance meeting is the the issue of creating a quorum if they all start to participate. I think the individual invitation of like one on a specific purpose is different than mm -hmm. a free for all, where like nine people show up and then we all participate and boom, we've created. We got a, a meeting. COW. We have a board, a board meeting. meeting. Mm -hmm. We got yeah. a board meeting. Board has, has right. broken out accidentally. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate it. No, I just want to get so. clear, clarification yeah. on that and make sure yeah. that that was possible. No, yeah. I realize that this is this especially is one of your things, mm -hmm. and if we're going to consider it, then you, 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 then you you should be allowed to say this is these are my thoughts. Appreciate yeah. You can do it in writing and orally. You can do it both. Mm -hmm. um, that I will say, uh, these the, the purchase of vans I think has come up in the past, and certainly the, per, the, the talking to electric school buses has been discussed yes. a number of times. The the non lapsing fund has generally been considered, but not formally in any right. in any committee. Right. This is and it was the referral date was January fifth, which seems like a long time ago, but really wasn't. So. Um, but happy to put that on the next meeting. I didn't realize that we were at least nominally scheduled to have a finance committee meeting tomorrow. My bad, I suppose. That's all right. We knew you were out of town. We figured when you I'm got back, you could town, find. Frankly. You can mm -hmm. find a date when you're feeling like ready for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're we've given everybody enough time to figure. Out I figured. What, I figured yeah. that you know Bev and Jen, who are the remaining members, they could have held a. You could have held a meeting if you wanted to. Well, it, we actually had the same agenda that we had tonight, and we figured we didn't have to do it twice. Mm -hmm. This way we got it done. Yeah, no, we actually, I, and I'll just, just very quick aside, on the council many years ago, we had this issue where the work flowed from all the various committees to the cow and then to the council, and we thought, is that efficient? Mm -hmm. So this, this, this business of how work flows, mm -hmm. how referrals flow, it's a never it's a never ending yeah, uh, discussion. You try it one way, you give it up and you go back, then you go back to the first way. Right. So uh, we're never going to be completely happy. Right. <laughs> and facilities is misspelled. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, Andrea. I'm sure Andrea <laughs> noted that. Question. Jen. During um, our past budget cycle, we had talked about um, reviewing um, insurance, I guess, for the staff. Is that something that we should put on this? Remember how like you could go um, through the state and at one point they said that wasn't as cost effective or as beneficial to the employees. And then now um, I thought during the budget cycle um, they left, but um, that we may reconsider that for future. Is that like So I know item? Lori and Dave have already started looking into that. So okay. I think as soon as they have some information, I think it's about how much time it's going to take and how are our resources? Are they stable enough that we can make that transition? And when, when would that happen? But I think they're collecting some data. So I'll make sure I, I check in with them tomorrow and okay. kind of get information back to you on the insurance. But the insurance consultant did come up with a report where they said they had priced out um, the state plan. Was that widely distributed? I, we saw it. We did see it. I do think we mm -hmm. saw it. <clears throat> but I also know that the rates haven't been set yet. And I know that it, it looked so better for the board to move over, but not as much for the town. But the town has a much smaller clientele mm -hmm. than we, I mean, we really are the ones hosting. We're the dog. We are yeah. the ones, yeah. you know. Well, I think it would be good to set as a referral item so that we can have an official, like, full Yeah, discussion. we can always do that on it with like all the information. I mean, to me, it would be a COW. You'd want the whole board talking about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, the, yeah. and the fact that there are committees doesn't mean that the COW couldn't consider the issue directly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, I, I, think that, I think these other committees 
exist for convenience, but they're not strictly speaking necessary. If you wanted, all the business could be handled by a cow. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think there was one more item about um, the start of the budget cycle process, and um, I believe, Ian, you're going to take that. I'm trying to put a calendar of, like, what items we should start. Um. um well, and when is the, that something that the vote that be? we had on March 4th? I guess maybe we should talk about that briefly is to form an ad hoc budget procedure committee where we could take a look at the timeline and look at the format of the budget. And <clears throat> it wouldn't be one person, it'd be a committee for you know formed for one single purpose is to come up with a proposed procedure. And then that would be considered by the whole body and then voted on by the whole body. And we, in that March 4th meeting, we held the vote as to move forward on that. And it was a 4-2-2 or 4-3-1, I forget which, but mm -hmm. it was determined after the fact that it did actually it did succeed. Mm -hmm. right. The motion succeeded. So right. that committee is in process of being formed at some yeah, point? I think it wasn't the vote to form it in June? Uh, to meet no later than June 1, I think it was, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So prior? So it should be constituted right, and June. ready to meet mm -hmm. by June 1st. By June. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the idea would be like that, and oh yeah, and I also put a date on the end of it to be completed by like September 1st or something like that, I have to check the notes. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea would that be that, you know, it would be done in good enough time where it could, mm -hmm. you know, positively affect the next budget cycle. Next cycle. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I have one other item from the Athletic Fields Task Force. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> one of the things they were uh, discussing, they were looking to have us officially release the blueprint for the um, field house and athletic fields uh, upgrades. I guess we had contracted. We did. We paid for it ourselves. Right. Yeah, it's from SLAM. It's a study. It's a study. study. Okay. Yeah, comprehensive. They want that. They would like, they were asking. I'd be happy to. To, to have us release the information to them so that they could integrate. You probably that. have that, and Joyce has it. Yeah. Is that a thing that we need to make an official board action? or? No, we, so. we will do that for you. Okay. Yeah. I got your right. words. You know, you yeah, got all the got it. We, already, we already paid for it. Yep. And so she just right. asked I'm happy to it. send it off. <clears throat> yeah. Got it. Well, I, my sense was that I guess their feeling was that there had to be some uh, that Mark Romano might be waiting for some official direction from the board or his immediate superiors to say go. So. Uh, the outfit that we commissioned it from. Which slam. Is, it's just a yeah. That's a slam. The slam mm -hmm. collaborative. Mm -hmm. The Borg. Um, that's how they were formed. They were formed by basically the collection of one company began to buy all kinds of other ones. So anyway. Um, I don't think so, but I'm going to ask anyway. Do we need their formal okay before that's passed on to somebody else? No, we paid no, for it. No, we paid for it. Yeah, I know ours. we paid for it, but sometimes they have provisions that say, uh, notwithstanding the fact that we've been paid a fee, you know, we have we sure retain certain rights to it. Okay. They knew that that was the purpose. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and thank you for picking up on the Athletic Fields Committee. Yeah. I'm glad oh. to hear they're meeting again. Yes. yes and I don't remember how many meetings I had to go to where I said it didn't meet, lack of quorum. I know, a lot. Yeah, or just didn't. Anyway, were there any other referral items? Of course, you can always send them by email, uh, fax. Oh, Carry a um, picture. <laughs> so is it time now if we had referral items that we'd like to refer to discuss? Yeah, I mean, you, yeah you can you can add them now yeah. or you can email them if you have yeah all right <laughs> well I guess we could get a feel feel for if other people are interested in talking about them we talk about it now well or actually you can just add works. them yeah because we're not really supposed to again I'm kind of letting things get out of hand we're we're just supposed to add the items at this point we're not actually supposed to have a substantial discussion because we haven't notice the public that we're mm -hmm. going to discuss an item, but you can add a referral item. All right. I'll just email. Or you can do it by email. Mm -hmm. I just find emails easier because you then you have you them. capture the whole. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Is there anything else? 
I see her. She's ready. <laughs> did you have something, Andrea? I did. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Do I hear a second? Second. Adrian seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.